Will Levis was projected to go pretty early in the first round of the draft, and that didn't happen. Instead, the cameras constantly panned over to him, waiting to get that call that he had been taken day one of the draft, but his phone never rang. Levis instead had to wait until day two for the Titans to call, where they selected him with the 33rd overall pick in the second round. Tennessee has had a bit of an odd quarterback situation recently. The Titans have started Ryan Tannehill behind center since 2019 and did have some success, but they're clearly ready to move on. They tried at the draft last year, and that clearly didn't work out, so this year, they went ahead and took a shot on Will Levis, who now steps into a team with a mess on offense with little to no bright spots. It's definitely not an easy situation, but the Titans are counting on Will Levis to be the future in Tennessee. Will Levis ended up transferring to Kentucky in 2021. He was named the starter to open the season and went on to play really, really well. The Wildcats went 9-3 and and ended up winning the Citrus Bowl. Levis ended up throwing for 2,800 yards and 24 touchdowns to 13 interceptions while completing 66% of his passes. He also added nine touchdowns on the ground. It was a great season, but last year, it didn't go as well for Levis in Kentucky. They were 7-5 and five in the regular season and did get blown out 21-0 in the Music City Bowl to Iowa, but a big reason for that was Will Levis didn't play. He ended up completing 65.4% of his passes for 2,400 yards and 19 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. Plus, he rushed for two touchdowns. Will Levis, at the very least, was fun to watch at Kentucky. He had some great plays, but he also had some boneheaded ones too. After his first season at Kentucky, he was viewed as a great NFL prospect. The weapons around him for year two, though, were pretty awful. His team struggled, and that made him look a lot worse. And it's probably a big reason why he didn't get picked in the first round. Before his time at Kentucky, Will Levis spent three seasons at Penn State, where he was the backup to Sean Clifford who actually was drafted by the Packers in the fifth round. Levis ended up redshirting in 2018 and then started one game in each of the following seasons. In his time at Penn State, Levis passed for 644 yards and three touchdowns to two interceptions while completing 65.7% of his throws and rushing for six touchdowns. Clearly, Penn State wasn't the right spot for him, and he transferred to Kentucky where he finally got the starting gig. The Titans drafting Will Levis may just signal the end of the Ryan Tannehill era in Tennessee. This is really deja vu for Tannehill. The Titans used a third round pick last year on Malik Willis. He ended up starting in just three games for the Titans last season and, well, safe to say he wasn't very good. He completed only 50.8% of his passes and had three interceptions without a single touchdown. Willis just looked flustered and terrible in his time on the field, and it was very, very clear that he isn't the future guy in Tennessee. Tennessee. Willis was already a project type quarterback who needed to work his way up to starting caliber. But after last year, I don't really see him as a starting level NFL quarterback at all. Ryan Tannehill is fine and a hell of a lot better than a replacement quarterback, but he dealt with an ankle injury last year and it just completely derailed the Titans season. Tannehill is good, but he's nowhere near elite and he'll never be the reason why a team wins a Super Bowl. And that's why the Titans drafted Malik Willis and now Will Levis. Will Levis wasn't the only important offensive player the Titans took at the draft, though. They also brought in a brand new running back in the third round, Tyjay Spears. Spears played at Tulane for four years, where he started his sophomore season as the starting running back, but he ended up suffering a torn ACL in week three. Spears returned in 2021 and rushed for 800 yards and nine touchdowns. Then he really exploded onto the scene last season. He had 1,500 yards and 19 touchdowns, plus two more receiving, and Spears was named the AAC Offensive Player of the year for his efforts. Will Levis and Tajay Spears should definitely help the offense in Tennessee, but neither of them went in the first round. The Titans had the 11th pick of the draft and used it on an offensive tackle, Peter Skoronsky. Skoronsky was a three-year starter at Northwestern, and in his freshman year, he was named second team All Big Ten before moving up to first team in his last two collegiate seasons. Then, as a junior, Skoronsky was a unanimous All-American, the first in program history. He was always a beast, even dating back to high school. Skoronsky went to Maine South High School in Illinois, where he was a four-star recruit and the number three center in the class. And now, he's supposed to be the Titans' savior at tackle. 
To say that the Titans offensive line is bad would be an understatement. It might have even been the worst line in football last year. Tennessee knows that it sucks and certainly tried to fix it up a little bit. They signed Andre Dillard to a three-year $29 million deal in March. He spent his last four seasons in Philadelphia after being a first-round pick. The Titans are certainly banking on Peter Skaronski to develop, and maybe even Nicholas Petit Frere can improve too. He was a third rounder last year. The Titans desperately need the offensive line to be better. Malik Willis stood zero chance in 2022. He may have not been very good or really had the knowledge to succeed, but he definitely wasn't going to with that offensive line. And that could be the same case with Will Levis. Putting him out behind that line to start his career is going to make him a bust in no time. The Titans line has to perform better. And if it doesn't, Levis might be screwed. To make matters worse, there aren't really a lot of good weapons around to help Levis develop. The Titans expected top wide receiver is Traylon Burks. He was a first round pick last year. Burks ended up suffering a turf toe injury though and landed on injured reserve. In only 10 games played, he had 425 yards and a single receiving touchdown. The two is probably Nick Westbrook Akine. He's entering his third year in the pros, all of those spent in Tennessee. His career best season was in 2021 with 476 yards and six touchdowns. The third best wideout on the roster is probably going to be Kyle Phillips, a fifth rounder last year who only had 78 yards in 2022 before a hamstring injury. Luckily, there is some hope at the tight end position after Chigakonkwo had a good rookie year. He was a fourth rounder and went on to record 400 50 yards and three touchdowns. Okonkwo should hopefully continue to develop. It's pretty clear that the Titans are trying to improve the receiving weapons. I mean, three of their four expected starters were literally drafted last year. But the question is, are they really good enough for the passing game to not completely suck this year? The roster is not good enough on offense, and that's why Derrick Henry is going to be so important this year. The offense is probably still going to run through Henry unless he gets traded, which Tennessee seems to want to make happen. Happen, but I don't think it actually will. Henry is coming off of another good year where he had 1,500 yards, a mark he's hit in three of the last four years. Even in 2020, where he only played in eight games, Henry had over 900 yards. He's just insane, and the Titans are going to have to heavily rely on him and hope that he takes some of the pressure off of Will Levis whenever his time does come to start. The Titans offense could potentially be promising, but if they're any good next season, it'll probably be because of the defense. The biggest strength of the Titans' defense has to be the defensive line. Jeffrey Simmons is one of the best pass rushers in the league. He has 16 sacks over the past two seasons, and he just signed a four-year, $94 million extension. On the other side of the rush is Danico Autry. Those two together were one of the best tandems in football last season. The defense should also improve because of Harold Landry coming back from injury. He was just fantastic in 2021. Landry had 12 sacks and made the Pro Bowl. He got a big extension before last season, but then tore his ACL before the regular season. Having him back alone is going to make the defense a lot better. The inside linebacker group is weak at best. If there is a unit that completely sucks in Tennessee on defense, it's probably that. The cornerback room is also very weak. Maybe the signing of Sean Murphy bunting to a one-year deal helps at least a little bit, but it's really not that pretty of a signing. Luckily, the safeties are elite. Kevin Byard and Amani Hooker paired together are great, and not many teams are better at safety. There are some holes, but the Titans are really good on defense. It was the better side of the ball last season, and probably will be in 2023 as well. Now, the Titans aren't going to be terrible next season. Tennessee is clearly going through much more of a retool than a rebuild. The defense is close to being a unit that can win now, but the offense has a ton of problems. They don't have good offensive weapons, and the offensive line sucks. Most of all, they don't even know who their quarterback will be week one next season. Malik Willis was a bust, at least from what we all saw. And Tennessee wants to move on from Ryan Tannehill. That's why the Titans selected Will Levis. But if they can develop him well, the Titans are going to be back competing again soon.